it's been a while <laughs> since I've done a sit down fashion video. I feel quite nervous doing this. Ooh. Um, anyway, hello. Uh, let me introduce you to the first video of what I hope will be a monthly series called Wardrobe Wishlist. A series that will help me reinstate a more considered approach to shopping um, and will hopefully be interesting to watch because shopping for me in 2021 certainly was not considered at all. When I was going through my wardrobe, sorting it all out, packing it all up, ready to move recently, I was really disappointed in myself because I realised the kind of harsh reality of how much I had shopped emotionally last year. A lot of impulse purchases, um, completely blaming Covid and my mental state. I used shopping for a quick fix to kind of combat low points um, and as a result I've now got quite a few pieces that I don't really wear that often, um, that I don't have like a sort of attachment to and I don't really love enough. Um, so going into 2022 I really want to change this. So every month I'm going to create a sort of 15 to 20 minute video where I am basically going to, the way in which I feel like I can describe this is it will be a video to discuss all of the tabs I've got open on my computer. All of the tabs that plague me every day because I keep things open just because things have like piqued my interest and then um, I just don't know what to do with them all until eventually my computer crashes and then I'm set free from all of my tabs and then the vicious cycle starts again. It will be a video series where I kind of talk about things that have maybe like piqued my interest that month, things that I've really got my eye on, um, maybe things that I've tried on because I'm quite a browser. I do like to browse shops when I've got the time and I like to try things on even if I have no intention of shopping. So I think that will be quite an interesting element to do each month, show you things that I've tried on. And also just talk about things that maybe I can see sort of gaining popularity. It certainly won't be a fashion commentary like things on the runway or stuff like that because I'm not very knowledgeable in that kind of area of fashion. Um, but I certainly pick up on things that I see sort of like gaining traction or becoming big things within sort of like more mainstream fashion, I guess. So those will be kind of like the three discussion points. And I do, I would love for it to be a two way thing. I think as I sort of finalise the Patreon idea, fingers crossed starting next month, this will be something I'll definitely incorporate into like Discord. So it could be more of like a chat room type of thing. But these videos will also sit here on my YouTube channel so that people can have a discussion in the comments because I, like my immediate friendship group, aren't really that into fashion. So I don't get to talk about fashion that much. And then when I do meet up with people who are more into fashion, I actually really enjoy talking about what people are kind of interested in at the moment or like what's on someone's wish list. Um, because it's actually really interesting to just see what other people have got their eye on and kind of get feedback, I guess. That can often be really helpful. Um, so I would like to, I guess, know what other people are interested in, what other people think to the things they're seeing around them and what sort of things are piquing their interest. Basically, you can all have a real good nosy at what I want to buy that month, but not necessarily buying. So the idea is, is that we can just kind of like discuss things. It's not going to be haul videos where I'm showing you loads of things I'm buying every month. The, the, this, the point of this is to kind of avoid that basically, because I think part of it for me is if I discuss it, more often than not, I kind of like can talk myself out of buying things because I can really see why I don't particularly think an item will work for me, if that makes sense. Anyway, that's the basic idea. I'm sure as the months go on, the videos will develop a structure, but, but just so you can kind of get a gist of what to expect. Anyway, intro over. Um, for this video, what I decided to do is kind of set some goals, I guess, for 2022. So I've picked six items that I would really, really like to add to my wardrobe this year. Some of the items I have already acquired, however, some of the items that I've got on this list I think are gonna take some time to find and some time to decide on. So I think the search for them will actually probably feature month to month in these videos as well, which I think will be quite interesting to watch that journey. Um, but before I get started, I just wanna let you know that this video is in collaboration with Farfetch. Um, very regular viewers will know that I work with Farfetch quite often. I think I've been working with them now for like maybe almost a year, which is really nice to have a consistent client because it feels really, really organic. Um, and it's just nice for someone to put their so much faith in me. Um, I'm sure lots of you already know of Farfetch. It's a platform that houses literally thousands and thousands and thousands of incredible boutiques and brands. I use it a lot to find pieces that um, 
are quite hard to find, like brands that are quite hard to find or like rare pieces. But in 2022, I think what I wanna use Farfetch for is to kind of discover new brands and look for more elevated basics, which I will touch on slightly later. Um, 2022 for me is the year of elevated basics. My wardrobe is full of so many basics to the point now where I just don't, I don't need any more. What I'm, what I'm looking for, I think, is things with a bit more character to them, things with a little bit more of a twist, um, and I will be using Farfetch for that. Um, working with Farfetch is always a joy because I get to give you a 10% off code. I'll put that here. It is um, YT10BB and all the T's and C's will be in the description box below. Okay, so six items that I would like to add to my wardrobe or have already added to my wardrobe in 2022. Six key items, shall we say. That sounds a bit better, doesn't it? Okay, so the first thing that I need to sort out and add to my wardrobe is a new purse slash wallet because this situation is not practical whatsoever. So this is just a zip pouch um, from Comme des Garçons that I've had for about six or seven years. Um, I'm very attached to this because it was my first uh, sort of luxury small leather goods purchase. Um, and I'm so impressed with the condition of it considering how much it has been thrown around jostled around in my handbags, just pulled in and out of handbags. Um, yeah, it's in really good condition. The logo has worn off quite a bit at the front, but aside from that, it is um, great. The hardware is a little bit worn. Um, however, just this isn't serving its purpose anymore, sadly, because it is just one big compartment stuffed with cards, receipts, memory cards, hair bands. There is all sorts of stuff in there. Um, and it is not organized and it's extremely difficult to find anything in here. Also, um, I now carry around with me a coin pouch. So I have this for my cards and my receipts, and then I have a coin pouch for money, you know, physical coins, um, which is even more impractical because I'm carrying around two things with me. Everything needs to be consolidated to one purse slash wallet because I can't, every time I go shopping, I am just here for ages, just like, yep, yep. Oh. Just, just a moment, I've, it's definitely in here. Um, so yeah, I need something way more practical. Oh. Um, I've wanted to Jill Sander purse for a very long time, but I find that a lot of the styles have maybe a little bit too much hardware for my particular taste. So um, I decided to look at the menswear offering. And obviously men's always have a lot less bells and whistles, don't they? They're way more pared back. And I think I have picked the most minimal option I could find. It is literally just like a fold over um, wallet with, it's got a card slot here, another card slot there, and then it has a coin pouch here. It looks a lot smaller, doesn't it? It looks like I'm downsizing drastically, which actually is a good thing because it will stop me from hoarding so many receipts and stuff. But also this, if you actually compare the size of this, but take away the excess leather that isn't like, it isn't actually too dissimilar in size. That's a really poor demonstration, isn't it? Um, but like I said, I, I need to stop hoarding the amount of receipts and things that I, I hoard in this pouch because it is just one big abyss where everything gets lost. Didn't trans I haven't transferred everything over to this yet because I wanted to be able to show you this in its kind of like fresh state. But now in hindsight, I'm thinking actually it probably would have been way better if I'd shown you what it's like with everything in. Although I wanted to show you the the dire situation that is the large stuffed pouch. The second thing that I have wanted to add to my wardrobe is a pair of black mid-heeled boots that are easy to walk in for every day, every situation. But I've wanted the boots to have a little more character to them, some sort of interest to them. And this is what I mean by elevated basics. I've got so many basic things in my wardrobe, which is fantastic because I've got a great foundation of basic things. However, I get dressed in the mornings quite often and I just feel a bit meh. I kind of want something else to add a little bit of something, something to my outfit. Um, and I think you can often do that with shoes and accessories really well. I think those types of things can really add interest to an outfit. Um, so I have, I think, no, I know I have found my everyday black boot. 
this is definitely the one. Some of you might remember um, years ago, about three years ago, I bought a pair of white Maison Margiela tabby boots. I bought them secondhand. I have, had wanted a pair of tabby boots for so long. Found a pair on Vestia Collective. Um, however, I sold them quite swiftly after acquiring them because I didn't wear them. And I was absolutely gutted because I, I, I'd wanted them for so long and then when I got them I was like, oh, they're not really me. And I think what the issue was is at the time I just didn't feel confident enough to wear them. Um, they are a particular style. I know some people absolutely detest them, think they're disgusting. I actually think they're beautiful. I really, really like the tabby toe on them. But at the time I just didn't feel confident enough to wear them out. Also, the heel on the like regular the original tabby boot is actually quite high. It's chunky, but it is quite high. And I'm not very good at walking in high heels, so I didn't wear them for that reason as well. And also they were white. I don't know why I picked white, but it was not a practical choice and it wasn't a very good choice for my style. Um, so yeah, I sold them and actually kind of, it was a case of the one that had always gotten away. I kind of always regretted selling them, but I was like, but why? I, I never wore them, but it was just the, the taste of the tabby. I was like, I had a tabby. I think the issue was is that it just wasn't the right tabby for me and I think I have found the tabby for me. Um, so these are a new style that they released last year I think it was for women. They've done this style for men for years um, and I've always been very jealous of the men having that style as an option um, but they finally released it in a women's version and look at that heel height look at it it's like perfect for every day it's round it's proper chunky um the leather is absolutely beautiful on these it's quite um it's it's got a lot more grain to it than the regular boots you on the other boots it's a very sort of like matte flat leather whereas this has got a little bit of a shine to it and some grain to it an absolute thing of beauty um they're they're very divisive these boots and i actually really like that but for me i just i think when you've got such a, a, a Kind of basic outfit on and they've just got these little tabby toes at the bottom it's very sweet and i think it just adds some interest um so yeah that that's my black boot this is my black mid-heeled boot found sorted um the reason i haven't worn them yet is because i originally ordered a 38 but they're a bit too big so i ordered i swapped them for the 37 and a half and they just arrived last night so once i finish filming this video i will be stomping around in these for sure and the third thing that I really would like to add to my wardrobe for 2022 is a short winter coat and a short summer jacket. I know what you're thinking, Brittany, you only wear long coats. That's the issue. I only wear long coats and I only own long coats. The only short coat that I have is my barber, which isn't really great in the depths of winter. And for me, long coats are my thing. It's, it's, that's just what I wear in the winter. They're quite a security blanket for me, I think. I've always thought that short coats don't suit me. It's all about the long coat. The longer, the bigger, the better. But over the last year, there have been many instances where I've thought, you know what, I'm wearing a banging pair of trousers and these trousers need to be seen, but I don't have any short coats. Um, so I have actually purchased a winter short coat. It's not here yet. I was hoping it would be here by the time I filmed this video, but it's not um, because it is a very special coat that has been made to order. So it does take a while to create um, and it is a sheepskin coat from Corley Studio. Some of you might know of Corley Studio um, based in East London, I believe, um, founded by Hannah Corley. Uh, there, It's such a beautiful brand. Everything is hand cut, crafted, all in London. Um, so as you can imagine, that process does come with quite a hefty price tag. Um, recently, Leandra Medine was seen wearing the patchwork Avis jacket, and ever since then, the jackets have been going in and out of stock quite quickly. Um, and I've had my eye on the Avis jacket in the brown leather for so long, um, but it, like I said, it's such a hefty price tag. You're talking sort of like 1,200 pounds for a coat. Um, it's just, it, I've, I'm denied about it for so long and I've never really like bit the bullet. And then just after Christmas, they posted that they were having a 30% off um, site-wide sale. So 30% off everything for 24 hours only. Was it, it might even actually only been 12 hours. Um, so I kind of went into a bit of a panic mode because 
30% off is quite a hefty discount on something that expensive. So I thought, right, if I'm gonna make this purchase, I'm gonna make it now. So I showed Dean the jacket and then I also showed him the other colorways that it came in. And I was like, so what do you think to this? Like, this is the one I've really got my eye on. Here are some of the other colorways. And there was brown, leather, a very traditional sort of like light, sandy, browny colored suede, and then a full black version in suede as well. Um, and he said black, he was like, I totally get why you want the brown one. It's absolutely beautiful. However, I really don't think it's something you'll wear very often. And I really don't think it's something that's going to fit into the rest of your wardrobe very well. You will definitely wear the black one. Um, so I ordered the black and um, I spent like hours measuring all of my other coats against the size chart. And I was like, right, I have to get this right because obviously it's made to order. So you can't really return them. It has to be right. And then I was looking at their tagged photos to see other people in the jacket to kind of get a gist of sizing. Um, so I settled on an extra small in the end. Um, I think it's going to be okay. I think the small, based on what I'd seen online and other people wearing a small, would have been a bit too big for me. So hopefully that will feature actually in next month's wish list. I can sort of show you and give you my first impressions of that for sure. And then also I'm looking for a, basically a summer version. So I have got my eye on a Margaret Howell jacket that's in the sale. It's a sort of crop brown wool coat with an asymmetric placket so rather than sitting down the middle it kind of um, fastens to the side very sort of like boxy really simple um, and it's it, the only thing that's kind of holding me back a bit is it's brown I'm just unsure how much I would wear brown but then I do wear a lot of black a lot of grey and a lot of navy which I think go well with brown e easy so yeah I've I've got that opened up as a tab and I'm sort of looking at it several times a day and I think it will be something I think I need to purchase it because Margaret Hall stuff as soon as it goes in the sale sells out really quickly or maybe if I'm in London actually in the next few days I could go in and try it on but yeah, they're, they're, that's my winter and my summer jacket that I want to add to my wardrobe for 2022. Okay, number four. So I really want some interesting denim in my wardrobe. I, when I do wear denim, tend to live in straight leg jeans pretty much. The only sort of interesting jeans I have are the Studio Nixon ones, which are sort of like a cropped, almost like barrel leg. Um, so I kind of want a few more pairs that are like that, that just got a little bit of interest in them. Because I, I've said this before, when I don't really know what to wear, or I just want to sort of feel like me, one of my go-to looks is to wear either a head-to-toe navy look, or I put on a turtleneck and a pair of jeans. Um, but often I just put the jeans on and I'm a bit like, oh, this would be so much more interesting if the jeans had a little bit more something to them. Um, and I've always liked the look of kind of balloon shaped jeans but it is quite difficult on my frame to sort of wear that shape because often they're cut for a much taller person so I was looking on Farfetch and I discovered mother denim and the the um the curbside ankle which is a cropped balloon leg shape I obviously will put a cutaway in so you can see how these look on um so obviously on me they're not cropped but because they're intended as a crop fit on me. They're actually a really nice length and I like how slouchy they are. Um, I did size up in them to a 26 because also in 2022, I am not here for things that are uncomfortable. So I do find I'm sizing up in things quite a lot so I can wear things slightly looser. Um, I love how these look with loafers. I think they look really nice with my Oxford tabbies as well. And I think they're gonna look great with the tabby boots. Um, just paired with the turtleneck and that's like an interesting shoe. I just love that there's just enough elements of kind of like interest there. There's a slightly unusual shape in there. So it just feels a little bit more elevated than just turtleneck and jeans. Um, I also think in the summer with um, like a, just a basic slouchy vest or a t-shirt and some sandals, voila, lovely. Overall, quality of these is really, really nice. They have, they don't feel um, thin. That's the other thing as well. Like I don't like it when denim feels thin. I like my denim to be quite rigid um, and these definitely have that feel to them. The other thing 
in the denim category is I'm, I would love a pair of 501s, but like vintage 501s that fit me perfectly. It's really hard to find them with the correct leg length because obviously most jeans are like a 32, 30. I might be able to get away with 30, but I think the journey to find the perfect 501s is going to be a long journey that will all take you on. Um, but I would absolutely love a pair of just like the classic blue 501s and a white pair, but I know white pairs are really hard to find in good condition. Um, so those are the denim pieces that I am excited about for 2022 and I'm excited to have a good old hunt for a pair of 501s. The fifth thing that I'm on the hunt for in 2022 is a blazer. So I do actually own quite a lot of blazers, but they all fit me terribly. Um, and the particular style of blazer that I have in mind, I think is gonna be something quite difficult to find just because it's not really kind of in, it's not the kind of cut that I see in the mainstream at the moment, it might become more popular in 2022, who knows? Um, but it is the type of blazer that has quite like short lapels and the buttons start quite high up. So at the moment, and has been for quite a few years, that kind of really big oversized trend of blazers has just dominated just everywhere and Everything is really boxy, everything is quite long, um, the lapels are always like really long and you get this kind of like real deep V and I've tried that and that's what most of my blazers in my wardrobe are and it just doesn't suit me. It completely drowns me for starters. Um, I need a bit more shape, I need some more darting in the back, I need like, I need a straighter cut, I don't want this big sort of oversized A-line cut with my blazers. Um, so this is going to be a real hunt to find this, I think. I will be, I think it might be a vintage find, maybe sort of like looking at old Jill Sander, maybe Prada, maybe Hermes. Um, I have actually seen some brands do this style of blazer. Um, the first being Maison Margiela. Their blazers normally start at around £1,500, so that is not something I can entertain at all. And then the second brand is Acne. They have got one at the moment for 650, which is still very expensive, um, but it's definitely something I will keep in mind just in case of like sales or discounts. Um, and I think next time I'm near an Acne store, I'll definitely go in and try it on because I'm, I'm intrigued by it because I love Acne trousers and I actually find the fits at Acne are really, really good. So I do want to see how that fits me. Um, but yeah, I, I, I need something that has, I want something with a straight cut that has a little bit of darting in the back, still like a nice squared off shoulder, a little bit shorter in the body and the buttons to come higher up. Um, and in order to get that, like I, I couldn't even like tailor the blazers I've got because they've been, they're such a particular style. I'd have to completely like deconstruct the blazer and basically build a new one. Um, I have also thought that potentially maybe going, having a look at a few Korean brands could be the way forward, especially trying to get that more cropped fit. Kinder Salmon have done a few in the past, but they've often been like tweedy fabrics. I want something a bit more plain, but I don't want a tweed or sort of like, um, I don't want it to feel like a heritage sort of blazer. I still want it to feel quite like clean, um, but I guess I want clean materials but a slightly more preppy vintage cut I think it's going to be much more flattering for my height so that is a real kind of task for 2022 is to find the blazer that finally fits me um I I kind of made my peace with that I probably will have to have like sleeves slightly tailored and things maybe taken off the bottom but it's really that button placement and the lapels and the shoulders that I'm really really looking at when trying to find this particular blazer um, what else was I going to say about it? Oh, and I want it in black and navy. They're the two that I want. And then the final thing that I would really like to add to my wardrobe in 2022 is a practical kind of like shoulder bag, like an actual like big handbag. Um, please allow me to um, give myself the title of queen of crossbody handbags. I have so many. I live for the crossbody handbag. It is like that I just love cross body handbags. Um, I love to be hands free. However, it is not always practical because there are times where I do want to carry more than just essentials. I am quite a light packer. Like I don't carry a lot of stuff around with me. I keep my the contents of my bag super super minimal. But often, like I want to take a book with me. I want to take a water bottle. Or my vlogging camera can take up quite a lot of room. So I would really like a bag that can be worn on the shoulder. 
um, that has a lot of room in it and that is secure because the I have the little lift and the tulip tote but it can't be worn on your shoulder and it's not very secure. It's completely open and because you carry it with the top handle you can see right in your bag and actually I've had instances where things have fallen out of the bag so I need something way more secure. So the contenders for this handbag are the Row Bindle which is quite a slouchy shoulder bag with a really nice sort of triangular shape and it, the the lead on it looks super, super soft. Um, the Jill Sander Goji bag in the square medium in black. So this is a very structured bag, very different to the Row Bindle. It's got a kind of clippy clasp on the top, so it has a little bit of a vintage feel to it, um, but it has the most beautiful, like, um, really like smooth leather. I can't, I, the word has lost me now, like Napa, maybe that's the word. Um, and then has a top handle that you can wear on your shoulder and easily just wear like in the crook of your arm or just down by your side. And then the third bag is actually from a brand called P a designer called Peter Doe. Um, it's from his spring summer 2022 collection. So it's not actually out yet, but I clocked it on the runway uh, last season. Um, and it's actually a crossbody bag, but it's more of like a quite a large saddle bag. So it's got a really thick strap. It's got a real sort of like sculptural shape to it really thick strap and then um, kind of goes into this sort of like saddle shape that curves around the bottom. So it, it's quite big um, and would hopefully fit a lot of stuff in but can still be worn cross body so I'm still hands free. So they're the three bags that are really kind of like at the top of my bag kind of consideration list at the moment. All three of them need to be seen in real life I think. They definitely need to be tried on, opened up, like really need to like sort of play around with them because all three bags are extremely high-end luxury bags that, um, you know, they cost a considerable amount of money. So I want this bag to be the bag. Well done if you made it this far. This video has been a little longer than I anticipated, but obviously I had the introduction and I had a lot to say in this video. But going forward, um, the videos will be sort of around the sort of 15, 20 minute mark. And I think as we go along, um, things will be a bit more confi concise, concise? <laughs> concise and refined um, as I kind of figure out what it is that I want to share, how I want to structure them and what it is that you would like from this series of videos. But in the meantime, I really hope you found this one interesting, getting a little insight into the things that I would like to buy in 2022 and the things I've already bought. Um, and I shall see you all in the next wardrobe wish list.